That's where they are tonight, playing a really good basketball team in Moorhead State. And a quick glance at Janai Broom, young man that is averaging a double-double. In fact, he has had a double-double his last three games, and he could be the latest Moorhead State product to get a look at the NBA at some point down the road. 23 wins a season ago for the Eagles. That is a young man that has played in this building that has missed that shot. And Skyler Potter, one of two former Wright State Raiders on this Moorhead lineup. AZ Say <laughs> gets the pull up for IUB. What's the carry over from his last ball game, Greg? And he had 15 points in a span of less than seven minutes right. in the loss against Chicago State five days ago. Jaguars out to an early one bucket lead. So you love the uh, confidence and you, you love the attack too. So that's a good start. Potter on the drive, offensive foul is called, and Nathan McClure <laughs> takes the charge no surprise. for the Jaguar. No surprise at all for McClure to stick his nose right in there and draw the charge, and you'll see him slide. You'll see the penetration left his feet, McClure right there. It's a good piece of defense. It's Moorhead State starting five. They have started every game that Moorhead State has played so far this year. Game number 13. Three of those seven victories so far have come against non-Division I competition. That is the case for IUPUI's lone win. Coming against Division III, Spalding also from the state of Kentucky from Louisville. Boston Stanton, freshman from Denver. Here is B.J. Maxwell. Stanton lets fire. Stanton cannot connect. He has struggled to knock down threes all season long. Averaging about four and a half points a game is Stanton. Stanton now the only player for IUPUI that has started every game this year because of the injury to mm -hmm. K.J. Pruitt that keeps him out of the lineup. McClure is called for a blocking foul for IUPUI. Well, it's not able to slide his feet as you know, quickly as he needs to. And you'll notice the immediate attention in the post to Broom. you gotta get, you got to get him. you got to find him. Trey Hollowell, not that time. And there's Janai Broom. In over 10 boards a basketball game. And IUPUI rebounding had been one of their strengths, but they were out rebounded 47 20 in the loss to Chicago State. And that rebound it gets an opportunity for an extra possession here for Moorhead. Well, and you see in the rebound, get you, you know, you, you penetrate. Greg, I talk about it all the time. I know I sound like a broken record, but when you're moving to the rim, good things can happen. You know, fouls, you go to the rim and finish kick out to a spotted shooter. But you got to be aggressive. You got to pick your spots, know when to do it. Hollowell has no problem oh. being aggressive, and you Man. can see why. The appropriately named Trey Hollowell. I can understand. 40% from three-point range on the season. He is in the top 40 in the nation in terms of three-pointers made so far this year. Yeah, the key was the great skip pass, where all he does is just catch and shoot. Say, again, continues to be more aggressive that's good to see for IUPUI. Oh, I mean, it's fantastic to see. I mean, you look at what he's done the first two times he's touched the ball. He's gotten something done. He had made two threes all season. He made three in the second half of IUPUI's loss on Thursday night. Wolf, extra pass to Potter for three. Again, Moorhead State as a team averages making nine threes right. a game. Right, right. So it is, it's usually a post look for Broom or a spotted up shooter will try to knock it down. IUPUI gives it away yeah. for the first time today. Well, unforced turnover. And when you're struggling like the Jags are, you can ill afford to give up uh, possessions. You gotta, you gotta get a shot. I mean, you gotta get a good shot every time down the floor. That is one thing they did better against Chicago State, just 11 turnovers. They're still amongst the worst in Division One, but that number has improved. and. A second turnover because of an offensive foul called against Moorhead State. Hollowell going to be called for a moving screen. This did not get set. You, know, you like how the Jags got a little energy tonight, Greg. You just like how they come out here and, and really seem to have, uh, and you look at what they've done offensively by going to the rim, doing some things. Defensively, they know they have a challenge ahead of them with a very talented Moorhead State team. Full court pressure by Moorhead State. I'll quickly back up and play half court man. And given the turnover issues that IUPUI has had, and given the fact that one of the guys that's missing tonight is their usual starter in Mike DePersia, out for a fourth game of 11 so far this year due to an ankle issue. Let's see more teams kind of pick up that pressure as DePersia is out of the lineup. 
Shot clock already in single digits. Somehow that pass finds Stanton. Save for the baseline and misses everything. First real chance to push the tempo for Moorhead State. Extra pass, Potter. And Holloway knew that was, Holloway knew that was down before it left his hands. That's how you run the break, Greg. That's, a, that's picture perfect transition basketball. You, know, you go throw the one side, reverse it back, spot a shooter in the corner. It's a pretty good ball. Moorhead State has yet to attempt a two-point field goal. Five tries from behind the arc. They've made two. They lead by two. Broom applying the pressure. Scramble for the loose ball. <laughs> the big guy is just hustling as hard as anybody can. Against and he's looking for some some love from the officials. Six foot ten. Now he is listed as a freshman. But what Moorhead has elected to do is basically list everyone right. from their class from last year because of kind of the free right. pass year because of COVID. So even though he is listed as a freshman, Janai is actually the reigning OBC freshman of the year. <laughs> well, I can see why, because he's got, uh, he, he loves to play, and he's got great quickness. I think he's got great vision. And six foot 10 out of the state of Florida. I tell you, he edges off the screen as quickly as a guy can. He's a Tua, up and through Janai Broom, and apparently, <laughs> Chooks unimpressed by the fact that Broom <laughs> is the seventh leading shot blocker went in right the nation. Went right at him, Greg. And I'm not sure exactly how he got it, but he went up and over him. Good good offensive move. Sometimes you're too young to know better. Might have been the case with Issa <laughs> two on that play. At six foot eleven in one of three posts that you will see split time for IUPUI tonight. Hall is in there. He too a former right state raider. Yet another three, and yet it's connected upon by Jalen Seabury. And Seabury is now 10 of 20 on three-point shots this season. Well, what sold that was that extra dribble on the wing to try to, you know, you got a little more attention to the guys in the post, and you got some more room. And that's going to go. It's great. Uh, but the, the challenge Coach Crenshaw has, obviously, is, is handling those 200 minutes that are allocated to his players. Who gets them and when uh, with the obvious uh, reduction in terms of your Numbers, you have to be judicious in what you're doing. Again, Hollowell for three. Long rebound corralled by Boston Stanton. Backdoor cut by Say. Tough shot. Ha, ha, and AZ ha, ha, Say ha, ha, got it to go. Well, it's a great backdoor cut. Stan makes a nice pass. And but Say is just so energized, Greg, from that outing last week. Jags a perfect four of four on their shots from inside the arc so far. And they enter this game last in Division I in scoring at 50 points per game. They cleared the 50-point hurdle for just the fourth time all season last Thursday. Hall the triple, and oh. <laughs> he knows the building. Having yes. played here before, he yeah. called glass. Unexpected off the window. So Hall the bucket, former Wright State Raider. He is one of a handful of... Young men with ties to the state of Kentucky that have transferred closer to home to play at Moorhead State. Shot clock again, single digits. Stanton, not close to a shot. Say has to let it go and doesn't get it on the rim. Right there. It's an impressive team on the defensive end. It's easy to see why they were a conference tournament champion a year ago. Oh, there's no question. And they they're, played, they're just tough. They're a tough-minded group. They played at Lucas Oil Stadium, lost to West Virginia in the 3-14 game. Alley-oop for Potter that Isatua does a good job of just doing enough to get in the way. Stanton mm. turns down the three. That is a long two. Maxwell the tip out. Great tip by Maxwell to keep it alive. Well, it's four guards and one post in there currently for IUPUI. That will be their rotation for most of the night. Lestrap attacks, couldn't finish. Got to the rim, though. You know why? If he could have gotten it on the glass, he may have had a chance. LJ Bryan in there to give Broom a breather. Hall, a more conventional made three, but that is already four. Good shots. You, you know, you think no one's taking a bad shot. And it's come off some good penetration. Some quick ball movement. Jonah Carrasco in there. 
Lestrap turns it over for IUPUI. Oh, oh man. Skyler Potter will man. throw it down. Just, it's good to be the lucky, right? You know, great work defensively to deflect it. Deflect it right to him. And in the blink of an eye, the lead grows to eight for Moorhead. Say has six of the eight so far for IUPUI. Carrasco going to work. Good double by Cooper, but an eighth. We'll tell you more about that as the broadcast goes along. And by the way, while we have the opportunity, congratulations to Austin Parkinson and the IUPUI women's team got their first victory over a ranked opponent in program history today as they won at number 15, Iowa, 74-73. Stanton finds a window of space. Carrasco, late whistle with the right when he got fouled, and Jonah Carrasco will shoot two. That's a rough possession. It was great, great defensive pressure by Moorhead State out front. Uh, may, able to make the pass. Just couldn't put it down for the and one. It's one of those where you work hard defensively, you don't come up with it. Carrasco, the native of Wichita, yeah. Kansas. And how about to go back, Coach Parkinson and the uh, women's team. Uh, they're obviously, they're pretty good. I mean, you know, they have, they've had great success under his direction. Uh, and I'm so happy for them. So happy for him. Big win. That's a huge win. And yeah, they took Michigan to overtime right. earlier this year. Right. They've been knocking on the door. Very big things are expected for the IUPUI women's team this season. Carrasco misses them both. He is now 50% on the season from the free throw line. Jaguars 64% from the stripe this year. Thelwell in there for Moorhead State. Broom has returned. Here's Wolf. Shot clock at eight. Hollowell finds a sliver of space, couldn't finish, and, and good job by IUP. You ought to tip that ball away from Broom. Well, they are a good, solid defensive team, IUP is, Greg. They really are. They're playing well, playing hard. They haven't defended the three like they need to. Stanton, the triple, not that time. Now, IUPUI defensively in the top 70 in the nation. Top 20% in Division One in terms of points allowed per game. That's going to be steps. Walk. Yep. Great on-ball defense once again by the Jags. Yeah, the most points that IUPUI has allowed in a game this right. year is 78. Only a couple of times yeah. have, have foes scored 70 or more. Problem is IUPUI hasn't cleared 61. That's the issue. Nathan McClure, great job there defensively on that baseline drive. And that's the role that he plays on he this really team. He really does. The Jaguars just eight in uniform tonight. They have played seven so far. Only Demitar Pandev in uniform yet to play. He'll get some minutes at some point tonight. Mm. Turnover, Maxwell and McClure not on the same page. Fifth giveaway by IUPUI. Hall turns down the three that time. And Oh, we'll get a chance to shoot two. Jags have done a, a great job to this point defending the big fella inside. Johnny Broom hadn't had many touches. They've kept him off the glass. We saw him turn down the three, then go ahead and take it to the rim. Hall, a young man from Houston, Texas, but played his high school basketball much closer to Moorhead, Kentucky. That would be at Doss High School in Louisville. And again, he and Skyler Potter both exiting the Wright State program to head just a couple hours south from the suburbs of Dayton. Right. Go right. about an hour east of Lexington, Kentucky. This is the sixth meeting all time between these two schools. And this wraps up what is a four-year contract between the two. It was slated to be played a year ago, the final game of this series. But COVID postponed that. Jaguars won the first three. Moorhead won the last two. IUPUI owns the only road victory in this series, dating back to December of 2002. Lestrap will pull from 17. Good look that would not fall, but Broom <laughs> ended up kind of tipping that away from his own teammates. Right. And Nathan McClure, again, the guy right there where he needs to be. 
Shot clock did not reset properly. Got it, it is now. They're going to reset it to 16, and they're all they're on top of it. Another good move by Lestrat. Extra pass to Maxwell. Even though that didn't go down, that's the guy you want shooting that shot oh, yeah. for IUPUI. Yeah. Everything, they did everything right. It just did not go in. Only thing Moorhead State didn't do right was no. run the break. Yeah, that drives you crazy as a coach. You've done everything you're supposed to do. You got the rebound, and then you give one away. Both teams now with five turnovers in the game. Talon Cooper, 6'4", sophomore checks in, and you would figure any sort of point guard issues stop when he's back on the floor because he's top ten in the country in assists per game, averaging just under seven dimes a contest. Well, so he's got great vision, great quickness, and he has teammates who can finish shots. Lestrap finds an angle. Broom was there to close it out. Yep. And the takeaway picked up by Moorhead State. And Broom's presence right there yep. changes everything. Another three by Hollowell. Got it again. Again, the skip pass. And I know, you know, I've talked about not being close enough to shooters, be able to close them out. Not much you can do when they get a chance to skip it that much. The best thing you can do is put more pressure on the passer if you can. His third made three, which again is about his average on a per game basis in terms of made threes. Second leading score for the Eagles at 11 and a half points a game. Lestrap, a quick glance at the shot clock. Minimal time remaining. Maxwell in time, just not on target. IUPUI is 0 of 7 from three-point range. By the way, it's now 12 in a row for Moorhead. Or for Moorhead, I'd say it was almost 15. There is Broom extending the possession. Now Wolf will give it a go. Not that time. I can't believe Broom was able to get the pass out of the double team the way he did. Broom with four rebounds to lead Moorhead State. Lestrat brought rim. Rim making something happen. And connects from the free throw line. Of course, IUPUI has already had one league weekend with the expansion of the Horizon League to have a 22-game schedule this year. They have already played two here at home against Detroit Mercy and Oakland, losing both. They'll face the defending league champs in Cleveland State next Thursday. Then ring in New Year's Day with us when IUPUI takes on their in-state rival, Purdue Fort Wayne. Cooper, no. Rebound Potter, and then an unnecessary mm. bump by Lestrap. Just couldn't stop himself. He's going for the ball. Couldn't stop himself. Lestrap, one of five players on this team that has ties to the state of Texas. By the way, Dimitar Pandev checked in at the break for IUPUI, so all eight active players now have seen time for the Jaguars this evening. No Mike DePersia, no K.J. Pruitt, and no Bobby Harvey tonight for IUPUI. Cooper's shot does not go, and Lestrap that <laughs> muscles L.J. Bryan yeah. for the rebound. Yeah, and somebody got got a, a couple of arm, a couple of hands into the back of Johnny Bruman, basically got him out of the way. And great recognition by IUPUI in the fact that Pandev. There was a mouse in the house. He's had a guard switched on him, right. and so he got him the ball on the low block, turned, and we'll get a couple of free throws. You know, we've talked about it before, Greg. They do a lot of good things. IEPY does a lot of good things, and then they um, they get betrayed by the shot not going in. You know, they don't get rewarded for their hard work. You just have to fight through it uh, and, and create other ways to score. Dimitar, the senior from Macedonia. And his season ended prematurely due to a knee injury suffered against Northern Kentucky in mid-January last year. Misses them both. He and Carrasco both go 0 for 2 on their first trip to the free throw line. Jaguars 1 of 5 at the stripe. A little token three-quarter court pressure by IUPUI. Just in an effort to slow down the Eagles. Potter for three. Not that time. And McClure doing his typical excellent job on the glass. Well-designed little play where you get a you know, double screen at, at, at the free throw line, a little down screen. And say last season, one of them will join us at halftime tonight, that being Marcus Burke, now playing with the Grand Rapids Gold in the G League 
In fact, he was on ESPN as of Sunday night playing in the G League Showcase. He can, he can score. <laughs> he has the big body and can score. Great decision by Potter. Potter. Had the highlight reel yeah, dunk earlier, was trying good. for another one. Got fouled, he'll shoot two. Well, it's a great skip pass, and Potter makes a great decision to turn down the three. One bounce and then fly to the rim. There he goes, two bounces. Yeah, yeah, that's taking it to the rim with a little bit of authority. Potter on the season, 73% from the free throw line. Potter the third leading scorer at 11 and a half points per game. B.J. Maxwell returns. Trey Hollowell, who has led the charge for Moorhead State tonight. The good news for Moorhead State is that Broom has been relatively a non-factor. Yeah, and you're still leading point. by eight points. Well, they've decided to double him on a touch. And so he uh, you know, has responded by you know, giving it up to his teammates. And he's got capable teammates. I love Potter's stroke. I, I, I love everything about his game. Potter, a native of Bowling Green, Kentucky, opposite end of the state from Moorhead. Let's strap on the attack. Nice move. And just could not finish, but able to get his own rebound. Say. Forced the issue and it wasn't there. So AZ say yeah. called for the offensive foul. Now you're better off, I think, just you know, kicking it to a teammate because they've defended you and defended you well. Janai Broom returns for Moorhead State. And he and Brian kind of job share that five position. Last time Brian saw the Jaguars two years ago, had a career high in rebounds with 11 and a five-point Moorhead State victory. Every time these teams have played, there has been a single-digit game. In fact, the first two times these teams saw each other 20 years ago, they went to overtime. It's going to be a foul on Pandev away from the ball, and one plus the bonus will be coming up here. And Pandev joins McClure with two fouls for IUPUI. It's an issue when you have eight, obviously. And it's an issue, too, when you're, you're fighting for position inside. There's contact on both sides. You got to be a little more judicious in what you're doing. Room on the season, a 61% free throw shooter. A no dribble free throw shooter. Good looking stroke there for the left hander. In addition to what he did as the freshman of the year in the OVC last year, he was the OVC tournament MVP. Of course, that took place in the state of Indiana as well. OVC tournament at the Ford Center in downtown Evansville. But aim broke, don't fix it. Good looking shot by the 6'10 lefty. And it's a double digit lead for Moorhead State. Maxwell yet to score for IUPUI. Say has eight of the Jaguar 13. The strap again gets downhill. Say gives it a go and can't finish. McClure, the other tip out. And then Lestrap lost the basketball. It's Hall, the step through. Kind of lost his footing on the way up, and then mm. Broom got whacked. Janai Broom will go right back to the free throw line. Janai Broom runs the floor. Now, Greg, think about this. Runs from the other end, comes down, and cleans it up. And you'll see him right here. This is a great, great hands, great steal. And he gets in a situation where he makes the Euro, can't get it on the glass. Broom's going to come in. It's good hustle. A lot of blue shirts around the rim right there, Greg. And again, clearly Broom has a future beyond this level. Exactly what level that's going to be, time will tell. There have been the cases of players from Moorhead State making it in the NBA. Kenneth Fareed is yeah. the most recent example. Think back to a guy named Ricky Menard who never got to play in the NBA but was drafted by the Kings in the second round. And I'm spending 13 years playing professional after having played for Moorhead State. They're going to get either Potter or they're going to get Maxwell for pushing Potter in the back. Yep. So foul on Maxwell and Potter will go to the free throw line to 
shoot one or potentially two more. It's double bonus on the 10th team foul. Jags need to take advantage of opportunities at the free throw line, Greg. Their ability to knock down jump shots hasn't been uh, good tonight. So if you give chances, knock down free throws. McClure. Not sure if he's dealing with a contact or just trying to collect all of his bearings after that contact. I think that's it, yeah. Potter, a 37% three-point shooter on the season. Right now, the Eagles are seven of nine from the line, while IUPUI is one of five. Largest lead of the game here for Moorhead State. And Potter connects. He's got six. And Moorhead gets into OBC action. They play host to Marty Simmons in Eastern Illinois. Mm -hmm. Coming up next Wednesday. They too will play on New Year's Day in league action. What better way to spend my New Year's Day than to be in the gymnasium with you? Let's strap the floater. Oh. Good rebound, put back and got it. Great hustle. Number one, great work to get to the rim and then stays right with it in traffic to get a very important hoop. We'll strap his third rebound. Not bad for a guy who was generously listed at six feet tall. Well, Strap has shown his ability to create a good look. It's a matter of finishing those good looks for IUPUI. Hall for three. Hall with 10. He came in averaging three points a game right. in five games played this season. That's just a great possession. Great patience on the part of Moorhead State to let the uh, screens develop. You got the ball in the hands of a great shooter who knocked it down. And a now second year in the IUPUI program. Absolutely great young man. There are a lot of those in this IUPUI team. McClure now will check out as Isatua will check in. And necessity is the mother of invention. IUPUI right. will go with, uh, Going with a the double bigs. post look. Yep. Playing the two bigs. Isatua can guard a three or a four, I think. We're going to find out. Well, 30-17, looking for Broom, great lead pass, and That's a great I'm not sure how you guard that. You don't. I mean, you, you know, have Isatua matched up with Broom. That was a perfect pass, tremendous catch and finish. Yeah, the ability is to go straight up. Right. Broom the looking show, the, the strap spins out of. Say <laughs> continues his hot streak from inside the arc. I'm just saying. Take it to the rim. Things can happen for you. AZ say, you're just saying. I'm, I, am, I have no response. Well played by you. Uh, <laughs> say with 10 of the 19 for IUPUI. Again, back-to-back -back double figure games, three right side. Mm. Got it by Thelwell. See, there's where you, this is where you have the two bigs that hurt you in that, in that possession. You had a miscommunication. You don't go out and you close out a shooter because it's one of your bigs who doesn't get through the screens. They get seven made threes from Moorhead State. And they average nine made That's threes a, a game. That's, That's a, a, a double dribble. Call. That's a good call. That is the ninth server yeah. by IUPUI. Yeah. And again, they came in 348 in Division I basketball in terms of turnovers per game at just shy of 18 a contest. What's, um, it's the classic double whammy. You don't shoot it that well. You don't take care of it that well. And Matt Crenshaw wants a full timeout. He's already taken his first. Plenty of time, plenty of, plenty of bodies. Just need to, they obviously need to take care of the ball. Need to knock down shots. Well, I tried to curl without taking the ball with him. Broom will spot up from 17 oh, and yikes. make that one. <laughs> That was almost of the set shot variety <laughs> well, for Broom. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but give him credit. I mean, he didn't didn't rush, didn't hurry, took his time. Nobody comes out to close him out. And he is starting to get on the radar of NBA scouts as Broom. Stanton will pull from 18. Good luck. His first basket. 
Well, he got a nice straight ahead look at it, you know, penetrated the defenders, pulls up for a nice looking jump shot. Five of the eight that have seen the floor have scored for IUPUI. Broom, after a slow start, mm. has now picked up the pace. He has nine. Well, he does a great job and gets a little jab step to get inside, gets the pass. Pretty good move. Broom with nine points and six rebounds as he looks to extend that streak of double doubles. Stanton extends the range, shot got blocked, and Broom will track down another loose ball. Chance to make it a 20 point lead, if not more. Hall, there are Euro steps and there are travels. <laughs> and that was the latter. Even though they're much more liberal in terms of yes. the interpretation, that one, Greg, was uh, in the extended Euro version. Again, the, the traveling violation has <laughs> kind of become like the NBA. Pretty much. If it's obvious, it'll get whistled. That was obvious. Final minute of the half. More I'd say to stretch in their lead to 18. Lestrap the runner. Carrasco keeps the possession alive. Go straight up, Broom collects a block, but Pandev with a loose change. You know what, hang around the rim, Greg. Good things can happen to you. Pandev part, right there. Part of the story for IUPUI is they are holding their own right. on the glass tonight. Morehead State out rebounding him by one currently. The difference, frankly, is three-point shooting. Morehead State has made seven. The next one IUPUI makes will be their first. 12-second difference, shot clock and game clock. Broom turns down the two. Hollowell the look from three. Broom yet another rebound. Moorhead State can hold for one, and they will. Hollowell wants a screen. He'll get it in time. Contested shot and got fouled. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So three free throws coming up. Stanton deemed to have got him on the arm. Greg, rule number one defensively, don't foul a jump shooter, especially don't foul a three-point shooter. Deep in the shot clock when he's taking a fourth shot. Giving you a bunch of three-point stats for Hollowell already in the broadcast, but another one that indicates where he generally lives in the half court. These will be free throws 8, 9, and 10 on the season <laughs> right, for Hollowell. Right. He is now 5 of 8 from the stripe this season. Well, look, they're a well put together team. You get the great post presence. You got shooters on the perimeter, guys who can break you down off the dribble, and they have a toughness about them defensively. They'll guard you. Hollowell makes all three. 10 of 12 from the line is Moorhead. Pandev from 60. They're their favorite son. Yeah, Scott uh, was the head coach at Martin Methodist in the NAI ranks in Tennessee for many years. And when Preston got the job at Moorhead State, Scott then jumped to be a Division I assistant. Spent a lot of time at Austin P as well. Good to catch up with him before tonight's game. Say, Stanton, Isatua, Maxwell, and Lestrap. And it appears the bench right now is two players for IUPUI. Stanton, first time no, second time no, and you got to find a way to finish that the second time around yeah. if you're the freshman. Well, because a couple guys had flown by to get the block, didn't recover in time. you got to get that second one. If you're just joining us, IUPUI, when the game began, when warm-ups began, it was, that number was nine. <laughs> Bobby Harvey got hurt right. in warm-ups. Then during second half play, or first half play, Nathan McClure, got hurt as Hollowell turns it over. McClure has returned to the bench, but it certainly appears by his demeanor that he is done for the night. And so it is an iron seven coming up here. <laughs> you know it's bad when Coach Crenshaw comes over to us before the game and basically asks us, what am I supposed to do? I mean, I lose a guy in warmups. Now this is, look, this ball went off the side. I, I think this is, a, 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 I think the right call. Yes. I, I really do. It went off the leg. A little, so it's, little disagreement maybe, but I thought, I thought it was the right call. So IUPUI will get the basketball back. Seventh Moorhead State turnover. And we had a right angle on the pass. That This is the yeah, proper right, call. Right in front of us. Lestrap trying to find Isatua. Isatua can't catch it the first time. And couldn't finish it either. Great save. 
Potter for three. Good rebound by Wolf, but then he couldn't hang on to it. Yeah, that's great hustle by Wolf. I mean, he just sprinted the floor, got in transition, did everything except be able to control the ball. But that's just fantastic. That's the way to work. That's great work right there. Wolf has been relatively quiet tonight, and he's more of a role player for this Moorhead State group. He can shoot it when he has a chance. Another Division I transfer played at Lipscomb. So didn't transfer far from Nashville to Moorhead. Say the runner. Both teams scoreless here in half number two, and Say, bit of a frustration foul that time. Yeah, I mean, he kind of got tangled up with Broom. Broom is, is a force inside at both ends. I mean, he's there. When you take it to the rim, you know he's there. He's, he's present in your mind. He's quick off his feet. Good work by Isatua. Isa two is a good matchup with him. Broom, not that time. Wolf, and one. <laughs> we talked a little bit about him, pumped him up a little bit, and what's he do? Come down, gets a rebound, and an and one. So first bucket for Wolf. Again, of their five starters, he is kind of the fifth option offensively. Five and a half points a game. Just goes out and does his job. Have an and one opportunity here. Young man is 12 of 13 from the stripe. He may have some friends and family here too. He is from the Chicago suburbs. Oh, as I close would hope as, as they get. From there? Yep. Come on. Playing here and playing at EIU later in the year. As far north as the OVC goes. Of course the OVC a league that is in some degree of transition because of the departures of Eastern Kentucky, Austin P gonna leave the league. Wolf commits the foul. I think you're gonna continue to see some moves in terms of uh, conference alignment, Greg. I, I really do. These things are cyclical, quite frankly. And obviously, when some move, others have to come in. So you see, you, you'll see spurts of movement from different conferences. Belmont is on their way out to the Missouri Valley. It's expected Murray State will be joining them as well. And there's also talk of a school from this state potentially joining the OBC if Southern Indiana makes the move to go Division One. Lestrap couldn't finish. Hollowell can. Big time Euro for the finish, the reverse. Maybe that's a big time move. Great move. Saw he had the chance to take the step. It's pretty impressive. 47 23, largely to the game now for Moorhead State with 17 minutes left to go. Lestrap gets downhill. And because Broom went to go cover Issa Tua, right. Lestrap had the athleticism to change his mind in midair no, no, no. and get the shot off. You know, a, a good recognition. You know, Broom does a great job. We've talked about it before, coming out, hedging on the screen, showing quick and early help, and just alters what you're trying to do out there. Here comes the double on Broom. Hollowell for three. His fourth made triple. That's how you draw up offense when you get doubled in the post, Greg. You're patient. You get, you kick it out, you reverse it, and you attack. That's pretty well done. Young man from Hopkinsville, Kentucky. And played for Wofford in the Southern Conference for transferring to Moorhead State. Stanton on the run. Not that time. Potter to Broom, and Broom oh, oh, be, yeah. that being the December 30th game featuring IUPUI and Cleveland State. And we'll ring in the new year with Purdue Fort Wayne coming to the Indiana Farmers Coliseum. That is Saturday, January 1st at 2 o'clock. Jonah Carrasco will check in next dead ball for IUPUI. They are basically out of guard subs at this point as Issa Tua could not finish. It's Pandev and Carrasco that are the two available subs for IUPUI at this juncture. And Isatua block just because he was in the semicircle. Uh, 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 and he was set. He was camped there waiting. He was. No, he was. He really was. In high school, that's a charge. In yeah. college and the pros, that's yeah. a block. And side out of bounds to Moorhead State. Well, and, and you, 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 you're playing so hard, you don't necessarily recognize exactly where you are on the floor. Great effort to get there.
I'll have to show you the replay. Broom, a couple of steps trying to get to the basket. Kind of shuffled his feet on the takeoff. Kind of an old school travel call. <laughs> Don't see it that much. Stanton, tough sled. Well, it's a rough possession because he's trying to drive through three guys. And here's here's our favorite player, Jake Wolf, making something happen again. Again, you know, you're you're out front, you're trying to dribble, penetrate. You're you're much better off, and, and Coach Crenshaw is gonna mention this obviously. To Stanton, you're better off, pass, cut, get it back. You know, when you see the double, give the ball up a little bit. So Wolf looking for a second and one since halftime. Right at his average in terms of points per game. Between five and six. If he makes it, he checks out. He does and he will. Jalen Seabury comes in to replace him. Wolf gives you productive minutes. He really, he really does. And, you know, when... Uh, Moorhead State goes to the bench. They've gotten good minutes out of people. Nine so far have played for Moorhead State. Given how this one is trending, there might be a few more on the way to the bench. Shot clock at seven. Maxwell has yet to score tonight. Ch strike that. He has. And that is the to, first we, made yeah. three for IUPUI. We need you to say something like that every time he has a touch. That's a nice looking shot. He was in rhythm. He has let some space. He has let IUPUI in scoring in eight of the nine games he has played in this year. And he was injured and out of their lone victory against Division Three Spalding before Thanksgiving. And a foul is going to be called on Carrasco as he and L.J. Bryan were doing battle on the low block. <laughs> You're fighting for territory, Greg. It's a battle for turf, so to speak. Backdoor cut and finish. Pretty well executed. You know, just off a top, on a, an inline inbound. You, know, you inbound, you get a back cut as you pointed out. Got a high low setup, you're all set. Seabury like Hollowell, they are both natives of Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Went to different high schools with the two of them. That's oh, going to be a that's an easy one. big time push off on the strap. That's an easy one. Seabury just gets right there, gets position, and you'll see it coming through. He's it was more of the shove, I think, at the end that got him. Because they're at, until the shove, I don't think there was enough to call a foul. See, so breathe the transfer from Florida Atlantic. Jags will go double bigs to give Lestrap a breather. Jaguars at a point there might be a manager told to go get a uniform <laughs> at some juncture in the near future. Hall for three and got that one. Well, you saw him get himself squared. Give, give him credit. Came off the screen, got that step in to get himself squared, and nobody there to put a hand in his face. Hall had scored 15 points all season. He's got 13 tonight. He's had a nice night. I mean, he's been really patient, let things come to him. But again, he's a young man that averaged nine and a half points a game playing for Scott Nagy at Wright State last year. Yeah, he kind of has an idea how the game's played. Just hadn't found his rhythm yet in a Moorhead State uniform. And the lead will continue to grow, and Hall will add to his point total. 15 for Hall. It's now 60-28. Maxwell, the triple. Not that time, and folks, this has turned into open gym. Cooper will pull and left it short. Hmm. Maxwell, the rebound. Well, we all need a whistle right now. <laughs> you and I. It'll be a foul on the low block. That'll go against Seabree. See, and Carrasco got tangled up. Take a look back at 
the other end. Well, good defense on the ball again. This is one thing that Moorhead State has done all night long. They put pressure on you. You try to dribble through, you're in trouble. You got to move the ball, move yourselves. Great cut, great cut. Oh, and it wiped, wiped it off with the uh, screen, illegal screen. This is a great cut in an ex well executed inbound that's negated by a ball screen foul away from the ball. Turnover numbers again starting to pile up for IUPUI. That's 13 against the Jaguars. They average just shy of 18 a game. A little confusion here with the Jags in terms of who's guarding whom. I think they have it solved right now. Seabury will try the deep three over Penn. Devin left it short. Will strap the rebound for IUPUI. Strap turns down the three-point try. Say with 10 in the first half, has not scored this half until now. And, uh, that is a, that's an issue. And it's a situation now where, you know, you just got to play for pride. You got to just try and get better, try and you know, work hard. Still got a lot of basketball to play. Say with 13 now for IUPUI. And a hold going to be called on Carrasco as he got tied up with Janai Broom. And that'll be one plus the bonus for Broom. Broom is difficult to defend one-on-one -on -one inside. I think we understand that. You know, he's uh, he's strong. He's quick. He gets a, you know, the, the thing that Carrasco needs to do is try to beat him to that spot because once he's there, he's going to be hard to move around. A miss from the line from Birmingham. Not a great free throw shooter at 61%. He's now made three of five for the game. And Say will look to go 94 feet and score it. And IUPUI has had their best success when they have gone right at Broom tonight. I think you're right. You know, it's kind of counterintuitive, but I think you're right. And him being as highly ranked in, uh, in terms of block shots in the country, you would think it's not the perfect strategy. Back-to-back -back games of 15 for Say. Broom, the catch couldn't finish, and that's no. going to be on the rim. Wave it off. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> you know, I know that was, was I right know there. That was a common problem yeah. in your playing days. Yeah, well, no, just waiting for the really. ball to come off you the know, rim. Potter, give Potter credit. I mean, this is great. I mean, he's all over this. Watch him. Yeah, I mean, it's an easy call. But how about that great effort, though? And you know, Jags need to get a body on him next time. Right now, plus four on the rebound category in favor of Moorhead State. Broom with his 10th rebound, so he's got that part of his double-double. Hasn't scored yet this half as Broom. That is four straight games with double-figure rebounds, and there is the double-digit points for Janai Broom. Tremendous pass. Two passes. Hollowell makes the great finishing pass. That, that's just great execution. Carrasco wanting the ball low block. Pandev for three, and that's his second May from three-point range this season. How about him stepping up, knocking down the three, penetrate, pitch back out. And that's going to be an offensive foul. It's a pretty good call. Pretty good defense. Slide your feet. Don't use your hands. Jags got a little energy right now, Greg. A little bit of energy. And again, knowing that you know, it's it's a Spartan effort for Say, Lestrap, and Maxwell. Yeah. Because hey. they're, they're the only three guards you got right now in uniform. You want to play. <laughs> you don't you care how tired you are, you want to play. Well, you got Stanton, too, and, and Stanton will rotate in with that group. But Great pass. Pandev. Look at him now. No, but out of bounds. Yeah, when he grabbed that ball, he was still out of bounds. All right, look, you know, you, you did everything except finish that shot. You took it to the rim with a little bit of authority, didn't finish. Midway point of the half. This one has not been in doubt for a while. Moorhead had a 12-0 run to stretch it to a dozen early in the first half. And 
have kept IUPUI at bay since then. Hollowell, not that time, and Pandev will track down the loose ball. Great ball movement, had a good look, didn't go. <laughs> and credit whom to whomever who got it all under the uh, under control. Resetting the five on the floor. Say, Lestrap, Carrasco, Maxwell, and Shooks Isatua. Stanton and Pandev, currently the two IUPUI players on the bench. Shot clock at seven. It's going to have to be Say. Carrasco in time. Got the rim, and Isatua keeps the possession going. Fell well, the rebound for Good Morehead State. Easy too. I mean, he's been active. He's been uh, he's been aggressive on the rim tonight. Jukes, a 6'11 freshman that is from Lagos, Nigeria, but spent his high school years or part of his high school days in the state of Texas. Hall. Now Seabury, blocked by Carrasco, wipes it away. That'll be a jump ball. Possession arrow keeps it here. That's a pretty good little play now. I mean, uh, Seabury took it to the rim pretty hard, and uh, Carrasco's right there. Did a great job in verticality. You see it right there. That's clean. That's a good good play. Got to go up quickly. Broom responds. Got the rim, but that allows the possession to yeah. continue. Just left it a little short, but good hustle to get the ball. Delwell for three. Moorhead State now 9 of 23 from three-point range. That is literally almost their average on a per-game basis in terms of makes and attempts. And Say has a new career high with 17 points. Listen, he's just played hard, Greg. He's gone at people all night long, played through traffic. AZ played one year at Alabama State and one year at junior college basketball. Second year in the IUPUI program for the Alabama native. Has been as many as 33 in terms of the lead for Moorhead State. And that three pushes it back to 27. Well, again, you've got everybody concentrating on trying to guard Broom at the high post. No one recognizes you got a standing shooter in the corner. Bellwell, a freshman from Orlando, Florida. Nisa Tua to Carrasco, who left it short. Carrasco has yet to score tonight, averaging three points and three rebounds a game. Broom uncontested from 17. Tell you what, how do you stop him? He can score inside, step out the short corner, knock down a jumper, active around the rim. Three different players in double digits now for Moorhead State. Last time out, they won by 40 against Alice Lloyd from the NAI ranks. So they have won three games against non-one competition this year. Maxwell, that's short. Carrasco with inside position. Some of the dirty work. He's worked hard on the glass, defended well. Of the eight that made it to the floor tonight, all of them have scored for IUPUI. Only say in double figures was 17. A little 2-2-1 two, two, here, three-quarter court. Try and get yourself uh, some hoops. If they'll, if they'll give you the ball, you take it. So and then they stay in zone at the half court. Tajon Claude in for the first time for Moorhead State. And Moorhead hasn't made the uh, transition yet. They haven't in terms of their zone offense. Claude, a six they have now. sophomore. Wolf off the front of the rim. Carrasco with the rare chance to lead the break for IUPUI. <laughs> Wisely decided to give yep. it to a teammate. Was looking for an outlet the entire time. <laughs> Carrasco, Pandev, Boston Stanton, the third back in there. Tough pass. Say. Tough pass to make. 15th IUPUI turnover. Trailer three for Wolf. Got it. That's great recognition by Potter again. Catch the trailer on the break. He spotted up, catch in rhythm. Wolf entered the game 9 of 22 from three-point range. The former Lipscomb Bison. He's got nine points all in the second half. Bench is going to stretch a bit further here for Moorhead State. Say going to be called for the offensive foul. 
Well, he got kind of, you know, when he was taken off on the dribble, he was, he was kind of a little bit out of control. You, know, you just see him here in his first couple of steps. He never really felt comfortable. Great defense on the spin move by Potter. Had it, had it down, sold it a little bit, sold it as much as he needed to. Tucson Redding in for the first time, a junior from Aurora, Colorado. And L.J. Bryan back in there. And again, there is not much need to put the, uh, to use the football parlance, the ones back on the floor at this point for Moorhead State. Well, I think you're right. I mean, you, you, you've done a great job. If you're Moorhead, you're happy with how your guys have played. Shot partially blocked, and then a foul going to be called. So two free throws coming up on the double bonus for L.J. Bryan. Bryan does not shoot it very often. When he does, it normally goes in. He is 16 of 18 from the floor this year entering this game. That's impressive. 8 of 14 from the free throw line is LJ. Adds to that total. Junior from Cheltenham, Maryland. This is his third year in the Moorhead State program. Enlisted as a junior. Seventy-two forty matches the largest lead of the night for the Eagles. It's been north of 20 the entirety of the second half. Pandev made one three earlier, turned that one down. And Stanton will go to the free throw line to shoot one plus the bonus as Redding whistled for a foul. Redding was just a little bit behind the time, you know, just a little, maybe a step behind getting where he needed to be. Couldn't slide his feet. Picks up the, uh, gets the foul. Stanton, three of eight from the stripe this year for the young man from Denver, Colorado. Connects that time. Jaguars now 7 of 11 from the stripe after starting one of their first five. Came in 332 in the country in free throw percentage. But gets the friendly bounce that time, does Boston. Averages four and a half points a game. If you're trying to draw positives tonight for IUPUI, you got to work hard. But AZ say scoring 17 would be that positive for IUPUI. No, I don't think there's any question. I think he is, uh, he's been that, that bright spot, if you will. Stanton a step back three, and bodies went flying. And they're going to call that against <laughs> LJ Bryan. And Pandev will shoot one plus the bonus. To go back to say, I mean, you think about it, you know, the last time we had him, he had a nice game. And I, I don't mean to be the proverbial broken record, but it's because he's, he's been assertive. He's been aggressive with the ball. He's taking it to the rim. He's trying to make some things happen. He's done it under control, which is impressive too. And uh, he's been fearless around the rim. Pandev with six. The season and career high at IUPUI is eight. Good looking stroke from Dimitar. Very definitely a good looking stroke. And Dimitar was the starting post when the year began last year mm -hmm. for IUPUI. That knee is limiting him a little bit at, at this point. Injured against Northern Kentucky in mid January a season ago. Jaguar is going to fall to one and ten. And this, unfortunately for IUPUI, their worst start in program history. Carrasco and Brian get tied up. I tell you, you know, irrespective of the score, both teams are playing hard. Right. And They're that's still the, still battling. And that's the other positive for IUPUI. And, and, you know, when you and I get asked about the struggles that Matt Crenshaw has had in year number one, and I think everybody in the program kind of knew this, this had the chance of being a rough year. It's kind of how the dominoes fell in terms of Seniors leaving, then Zach Gunn, you kind of were, were hoping to build things around this year, the transfer from Ball State. He got hurt in preseason practice, and you just kind of looked around, and you worried that scoring points would be a problem, and it would be. The one thing that has not been a problem for this team has been effort. No, They have given a good effort every night. They're just, 
a bit undermanned right now, unfortunately. And that's a credit to Matt and his staff and to these kids. You know, it's, it is tough. You know, it really is difficult. Yet they keep battling it night after night. Lestrap gets downhill and finishes. But Kari Lestrap with six. Good move. I mean, again, take it to the rim. Try to finish. Recognize where you are, where defenders are. A little high-low here. And the bucket is good for L.J. Bryan. L.J. Bryan does two things well. Number one, gets the ball and then gathers himself and makes a nice move. Not bad when that's your backup five, right? I tell you what, you know, he's, he's done well. Steps out off the screen. Lestrap will pull from 17 and score. How about him? And if you can get Lestrap going as no, well. No question. No question at all. I'm not sure how much from tonight carries over, knowing you're not planning in for nine days. Well, I think quite a bit does, though, Greg. I mean, in terms of your confidence, your individual confidence, I think your teammates recognize. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> Tajon Claude with the bucket. And his teammates are talking about that on the bus ride home. Well, Tajon's going to be doing some chatting on the bus with his boys now because it was just a strong move and a great finish. Pass tipped out of bounds by Thelwell, and that'll take us to our final timeout. Moorhead State has been in control from the early stages. This is the capper. <laughs> Eagles lead by 30 here on ESPN+. Plus. The Horizon League is one of the most storied basketball conferences in the country with two Final Four appearances since 2010 and seven programs reaching the Sweet 16. 23 Horizon League players have been drafted to the NBA, including current New Orleans Pelicans head coach Willie Green. To learn more, visit horizonleague.com or by searching the hashtag HLMBB on social media. Of course, there is a chance that Marcus Burke that we had on at halftime now playing in Grand Rapids to be the first IUPUI Jaguar of the Horizon League era to play in the NBA. Of course, George Hill has been there now for 13 years as Pandev makes his <laughs> second <laughs> three of the game. Huh? And Dimitar has a new career high with IUPUI. Well, great pass and just, you know, a catch and shoot. And he's got a sweet stroke, you know, right there uh, on the uh, edge of the shot clock. Two minutes left to go on this one. By the way, Braden May has checked in for Moorhead State. Mm. Freshman from Maysville, Kentucky. Take a look at Pandev making his second three of the game. Very impressive. He entered tonight with three career threes. Right. I think, he, look, he's capable of knocking down the shot. He's got a little bit of space, a little bit of time. He's got a, a nice stroke. That was good ball movement, just beating the shot clock. Claude connects on the free throw line. AZ Say will be come back in for a final cameo for the night. Look, it's a reward. You know, you played well. You deserve time. Let him let him get a run in. So Morehead State will bump their record to eight and five. Again, they're at home for their first two OBC games against Eastern Illinois and Tennessee State. Tennessee State beat IUPUI by 26 when they played 11 days ago. Stanton slips to Pandev, and Pandev got fouled, and Dimitar will have a chance to increase said career high. This is nicely done. It's a great skip pass. Stanton does a nice job on the penetration. Great pass to Pandev, who handles it and gets caught at the rim. And I'm bragging about your stroke, and, and um, that one kind of got away from it. Pandev, two of five from the stripe tonight. And next up for IUPUI, Cleveland State. Demoy Hodge of the Vikings name, the conference player of the week. Young men had 46 in a game last year from the U.S. Virgin Islands. I'll be in here in nine days. 
May has yet to score this year for Morant State. Let's see if they get him a look. We have reached that stage of the broadcast. Now May gives fire. Still a zero on the board for the freshman. This will be a fun bus ride back to Kentucky for these young men. No, they played hard. They're an impressive They're a team. They're good team. They really are impressive. Spot shot does not go for Clyde. Let's see if May takes one more look. Likes to pass it up. Yeah, should have gone with it. <laughs> there you go. Finds your teammate. <laughs> nice pass. Shot clock now at three. May again and oh, got yeah. fouled. There you go. This will be his look. He'll get three free throws. Well, it's a good nine-day break. You know, you give give everybody a chance, get away from the from the ball, uh, kind of think about some things, rededicate yourselves, and you come back after the break because you get right into it. You, I mean, you you've already had obviously a conference weekend, but now you get back into the week by week grind. May I get two more looks from the stripe? The 80 points, by the way, this is the most that IUPUI has allowed in a game this year. Opponents averaging 62 points a contest coming in. All right, now the pressure's on the young fella. You missed the first two. Basket looks like a thimble right now. Missed them all. He'll be hearing that about that on the bus well, ride home, Well, it's a yeah, tough spot. You know how it is. It's, it's difficult. Say off one foot. Out of bounds to IUPUI. So 20 league games remain for IUPUI. Strap able to split a couple of defenders. Final look of the night for Maxwell. Tough night for BJ. This will be just the second time all year that he has not led IUPUI in scoring. More heads.